In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, to begin the celebration of the Holy Mass, we call to mind our sins and ask our Lord for His mercy and forgiveness. Together, I, I confess, confess to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, you inspired in Saint Bishop Joseph Marello the ardent desire to express by his interior life and in his apostolate the Christian mystery as lived by Saint Joseph, guardian of the Redeemer. By his intercession, grant that we may imitate him in his intimate union with you and in his zeal for the service of the Church. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man there left in custody by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered them that it was not Roman practice to hand over an accused person before he has faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against their charge. So when they came together here, I made no delay. The next day, I took my seat on a tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accusers stood around him but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but who Paul claimed was alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate this controversy, I asked if he were willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he be held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, our response will be, The Lord has established His throne in heaven. The Lord has established His throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. The Lord has established His throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing in His kindness toward those who fear Him, as far as the east is from the west, so far has He put our transgressions from us. The Lord has established His throne in heaven. The Lord has established His throne in heaven, and His kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you His angels, you mighty in strength, who do His bidding. The Lord has established His throne in heaven. Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of all I told you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with him, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you. When you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted but when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. To our parish priest, Father Adonis, and to our concelebrant priests, Father Gerbert, Father Wilfie, and Father Ernie, to our online viewers, to our parishioners, good morning to all of you. We have in our gospel today uh, one of the final encounters of our Lord with his disciples. This is an encounter which is marked with tenderness and affection. Our Lord asks Peter three times, Do you love me? 
Well, we all know the, the context of this, that, you know, Peter, he was unable to defend and man up for our Lord during his trial and persecution, that he had to deny him three times. So our Lord, in order to reinstate Peter as the head of the disciples, he would, uh, he would have to ask him three times, do you love me? We also know that in the Greek language, there are three ways to express love. It could be eros, it could be phileo, it could be agape. But what is more interesting here is that our Lord did not ask Peter, Peter, are you a master of the scriptures? Peter, do you study exegesis? Peter, do you know canon law or do you know the morals? Peter, are you a good businessman? But he simply asks him, Peter, do you love me? Because in order for us to become truly disciples of our Lord, we need not to do magnificent things. We only need to have much love for him. So he asked him, do you love me? Three times. And after Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. It was not enough for our Lord to hear from Peter, you love me. You do not express your love only by saying it. He told Peter, you have to do something. Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my lambs. Let that love be expressed in the work that you do. Because that would be the real measure of how much you love our Lord. So we often say, you know, action speaks louder than words. Well done is always better than well said. So you have to do something for me. Show your love by doing what is asked of you as the preeminent shepherd of the church. Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my lambs. Let your work be the ultimate manifestation of your love for me. And that would require even giving up your life. Let that love be shown even by sacrificing even your own life for me. That's why towards the end of the gospel, the Lord predicted the manner on which how Peter would die. And Peter would gladly accept that. He would die as a martyr, sacrificing his very life, this time to defend the faith that he has in our Lord. Because that, that is what real love is. Real love requires the readiness and the willingness to offer, to offer what's good and beneficial for you. The readiness and the willingness to sacrifice even your own life for the sake of your beloved. Today also, we are on the second day of our Triduum for the feast of our founder, St. Joseph Marello. He also has that love for our Lord. But that love is not only lip service. He showed his love to our Lord by following him, entering into the seminary, by fulfilling his duties as a bishop to his people, by founding the congregation of the Oblates of St. Joseph, Compania de San Jose, in that small room in Michelario. He would fulfill his ministry as a shepherd for his diocese and for his priests. And even now, he would want us to express that love, not just by lip service, by saying we love our people, but by taking good care of our youth, by educating them academically and morally, by going out in mission to aid the parishes, to work for the good of the diocese, 
parishes where we are in, and also to work, to go out of our way to make St. Joseph more known and loved by the people, to spread the devotion to him. My dear friends, this is the call of our celebration today. This is the call of our gospel for today. Yes, we all express, we all say that we love our Lord. Let us manifest that love by also going out of our way to show this, to extend this to as many people as possible. Our works of love, our charitable works, may be the expression of the sentimental love, the unconditional love that we have for our Lord. Let us continue the celebration with the prayers of the faithful. Please stand. The omnipotence of God is manifested above all in His mercy and forgiveness. In faith, let us offer to Him our needs, confiding in the powerful intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, of Saint Joseph, and of our founder, Saint Joseph Marello. For every petition, let us say, to the intercession of Saint Joseph Marello, hear us, O Lord. Through the intercession of Saint Joseph Marello, hear us, O Lord. For the Supreme Pontiff, that the Lord may give him grace and help and sustain him in the proclamation of the gospel and in his service for unity and peace, we pray. Through the intercession of St. Joseph Marello, hear us, O Lord. For the oblates of St. Joseph, that in following the footsteps of their founder and in faithfulness to their charism, they may dedicate themselves untirely, untiringly in working for the kingdom of God, in the formation of the youth in catechesis and in the service of the poor, we pray. Through the intercession of St. Joseph Marello, hear us, O Lord. For Christian families, that in obedience to the gospel and according to its demands, they may rediscover the sure road for the stability and growth, we pray. Through the intercession of St. Joseph Marello, hear us, O Lord. For the youth, that they may open their hearts in confidence to Christ and know how to give a generous and faithful yes to their Christian vocation, we pray. Through the intercession of St. Joseph Marello, hear us, O Lord. O God, our Father, fount of holiness, of holiness, we give you thanks for the gift made to the Church and to the world of St. Joseph Marello, who lived this experience of the faith in complete openness to your will, and by faithfully and charitably serving his brothers and sisters. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that may sacrifice in yours our prayers, petitions, and intentions, all may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Bless, O Father, the gifts of your festive family, and grant that by the example into the intercession of St. Joseph Marello, our lives be transformed into an oblation pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For us on the festival of St. Joseph Marello, you bid your church rejoice. So too, you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. And say, see who comes in the name. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our Administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, with the blessed apostles, 
and all the saints, St. Joseph Marello, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be called earth to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Us not into temptation, but deliver us, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not, O Lord, on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now we offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold Jesus. Behold Him, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Spiritual act of communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, in your abundant goodness, you nourish us with the body and blood of your Son. Grant that, following the example of St. Joseph Marello, we may make the Eucharist the innermost strength of our lives and the source of our charity toward our brothers and sisters, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Horatio Imperata, God our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, our Protector, Pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, Pray for us. Saint Rock, Pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. Prayer to Saint Joseph Marello. O Saint Joseph Marello, like your patron and model, St. Joseph, you are a proof that sanctity consists not in extraordinary achievements that attract the world's attention, but in the daily exercise of the virtues of simplicity, charity, and humility. With complete trust in the divine providence, you founded the Oblates of St. Joseph to serve the interests of Jesus in imitation of his guardian and protector. Father of the youth, protector of the poor and the aged, gentle shepherd of your flock, model of charity. You blended strength with kindness, prayer with action, and faithfulness to the church with zealous attention to the signs of the times. May your holy life inspire the youth to take the gospel as their sure guide. Your are always to be hidden and faithful instruments of God's work, priests and bishops to be loyal and loving shepherds. Pray with us that we may all live with that peacefulness of mind and heart, 
that comes only from a trusting surrender to God's will. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Kindly bow your heads for the blessing. May the effects of your sacred blessing, O Lord, make themselves felt among your faithful to prepare with spiritual sustenance the minds of all that they may be strengthened by the power of your love to carry out works of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may our almighty and loving God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Good morning again to all of you. God bless you all. Thank you.